We now have a party of four, and we recruited everyone from the western part of the world, so it's time to take a ship and cross to the southern islands, and the Totohaha Beasting Bay. Just a bit later, we make it to the sandy shores of the island, and already, we get to fight some monsters. More snails and lizard people, as well as some kind of jellyfish, sunflower, mushroom dudes. I decide to head south, where our next tale awaits. Casty gets enough BP for a new skill and learns Sweeping Cleave, an axe attack that hits all foes. She also gets her first support ability, Vigorous Victor, which restores 30% of her HP and SP after winning a battle. The coast is full of ancient ruins and white sand beaches, chests don't really have anything interesting, and Particio learns Donate BP, which, well, lets him donate one of his BP to another party member. Along that, he also unlocks his second support ability, Boost Start, that makes him start the battle with one extra BP. I find a red chest with a war axe that I give to Casti, and head for the Beasting Village, which should be now close by. The village itself is made of little wooden huts and its inhabitants are living a more primitive lifestyle. We run some errands at the shop and stumble upon our next traveler, Ochet, the hunter. I finally put my camera at a better spot and begin Ochet's tale. It starts with a cinematic text that's probably inspired of another great game franchise <coughs> that depicts as the myth of the three guardian creatures who watched over the island before departing to become guardians of other lands. The legends talk about some type of calamity called the Night of the Scarlet Moon and the return of these creatures to watch over the island again. Then, this giant talking lion guy Juva, who seems to be our master in the ways of the hunter, makes us choose a companion between an owl and a jackal. Ochet's night path action lets her befriend people and animals, and in exchange of some friendship jerky, I choose the owl and call her Mahina. The jackal gets mad about not being chosen and then flees to Mahina's surprise. Fast forward 10 years later, we're hunting a king iguana with Mahina and get to fight him. Ochet can use bows and axes, as well as beast lore, a skill that basically works like a Pokemon game, to capture creatures and make them fight for us. She can also summon Mahina, which always hits a weak point, and use hunter abilities like a precise bow shot or thunder magic. We capture the iguana after lowering his HP and have a conversation with Mahina, who doesn't let us eat the lizard yet. Uh, yes, she can also speak. I find a ring that grants me more accuracy and I make my way back to the village. As I'm about to get back, we witness a discussion with a bunch of humans from the neighboring village. They demand to let them hunt in the beastlings forest since their part is getting hunted out. They're rude and talking down on the beastlings, even threatening them with blades. Juva, also called the warden of the isle, shows up. He says it's their fault for being greedy. Ochet arrives and uses her day's bad action, provoke. She can then use captured beasts to provoke people into battle. We throw Mahina and our new friend the iguana onto the battlefield and beat up the rude guy. They run away and then we... No! You eat it, you use it into battle and then you finish eating it. Cook our new friend the iguana into jerky. We join Master Juba on the nearby hill for lunch and get some praises. Ponder about that day when I didn't choose the jackal, then Juva says Ochet is destined to be the next warden of the island when he's gone. A bit later, we are joined by the chief of the neighboring human village, Kohase. She came to apologize and ask for our help rescuing a little girl who got lost in the tomb of the warden beast. Juva is not particularly enthusiastic about going there, as it is a dangerous place, but Ochet agrees to help. We head back to the forest, get through the ruins, and arrive at the tombs. There, we get to fight little lemur guys and... plants? I find a composite bow in a chest and soon arrive to the lost little girl. She acts like she'd rather stay there than follow a beastling, but we use our befriend path action, give her some jerky, and all is well in the end. We exit the tombs, but Ochet feels like something is off. The birds tell us that the calamity has come, and we hurry back on Mahina's advice. We cross path with an ugly little guy and stumble upon other beastlings, talking about how a monster is currently destroying the village and fighting Juva. Merchant and safe points are there, so we know it's on. Get a few provisions and rush to the village. We witness Juva and the calamity fighting. Our master is hit, and it's now Ochet's turn to fight and defend the village. First half of the fight is pretty straightforward, even though this guy hits pretty hard and spawns ugly little guys to his side. The dark entity then gets mad and Ochet's latent power awakens, letting her use her animal instincts, a set of special skills she can use when the bar is full. We finish the beast, he mumbles something about something not being able to exist anymore and fades away. Juva then talks about the fact that a greater calamity is on the way, the night of the scarlet moon, and describes what the legends say. Once every 400 years, there comes a night when the moon turns scarlet. This night brings disaster and destruction for the island. 
So the legends say. Kohaze thanks us for saving the village and the little girl. Juva brings out human greed again, then takes us to the mural we saw in the intro and start explaining what's going on with the prophecy. We are then tasked by Juva to go gather the three creatures of legend to face the perils of the calamity. Machet agrees to go on the quests and she seems excited to travel with Mahina, so I say goodbye to my fellow beastlings. I'll be back, don't worry, and I'll bring all three of the creatures of legend. See you soon!